If you think your family get-togethers are terrifying, you don't know the half of it. Happy Thanksgiving, my re-sparked planeswalkers. Today we are celebrating with another holiday deck in our Holly Deck series. Feast is a budget Sorn Imperious Bloodlord deck for less than $25. Since Sorn is over $11 at the time of this filming, he will not be included in this deck's price. In this series, I craft budget Oathbreaker decks designed to introduce new players to the format, and I take the time to explain how the deck works and how it was designed. For many people, this holiday, Thanksgiving, is about spending time with family, showing gratitude for what you have, and feasting together. And in today's deck, we are attending a dinner party hosted by one of Magic's oldest families, the Sengears. But be careful, you do not want to become the meal. Our Oathbreaker this time is Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. For two and a black, he's a four loyalty planeswalker. His plus one ability will give target creature we control death touch and lifelink until end of turn, and if it's a vampire, we get to put a 1-1 counter on it. His second plus one ability will allow us to sacrifice a vampire, and if we do, target player takes three damage and we gain three life. And his minus three ability allows us to put a group vampire creature card from our hand directly onto the battlefield. Field. Our theme signature spell is Drag to the Underworld for 2 and 2 black. It says this spell costs X less to cast where X is equal to our devotion and then we can destroy target creature. Drag to the Underworld is how we invite the meal to the dinner. It's also really nice because as long as our family members keep showing up to the party, we can reduce the cost and the tax on this spell. So that's the command zone. What's the game plan? This deck wants to have our opponents for dinner with its vampire tribal theme. And how do we win? Our goal is to have a good time in winning with either aggro or drain. For us, we also kind of have a secret win condition where we'll be real happy if we can just get the entire Singor family together to celebrate. Now this is a fun theme deck and it has a power level of six. In our first section, we've got all the small creatures that have evasive abilities that can really benefit from Sorn's plus one in the kitty table. Changeling Outcast for one black mana is a creature shape shifter with changeling. He's a 1-1 one, one, and he can't be blocked, but he also can't block. Vampire Cutthroat for one black is a 1-1 one, one with sulk and lifelink, so he can't be blocked by creatures with power greater than him. Indulgent Aristocrat for one black is a 1-1 one, one with lifelink, and if we sacrifice, pay two and sacrifice a creature, we can put a 1-1 one, one counter on each other vampire we control. Shadow Alley Denison for one black is a 1-1 one, one whenever another black creature enters the battlefield under our control. Target creature gains intimidate until end of turn. This is a great way to give any of our creatures evasion for a turn. Cordial Vampire for two black is a 1-1. One, one. Whenever a Cordial Vampire or another creature dies, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire we control. And finally, Bloodthirsty Aerialist for one and two black is a 2-3 with flying. Whenever we gain life, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So the last two creatures in this section are the chaperones at our kitty table. Now moving on, we have the host family for our dinner. Arena Singer costs two and two black. She's a 2-2, and white and green enchantments each cost two more to play. Grandmother Singer, for four and a black, is a 3-3, three, three, and if we pay one and a black and tap her, we can give target creature minus one, minus one till the end of turn. Veldrain Singer, for five and two black, is a 5-5 five, five legendary human. If we pay one and two black, he'll gain forced walk and minus three, minus O until end of turn. Sanger the Dark Baron, for four and two black, is a legendary vampire noble. He's a 4-4 four, four with flying. Whenever a creature dies, we put two 1-1 one, one counters on him. Whenever another player loses the game, we will gain life equal to that player's life total at the beginning of the turn they lose in. Sanger Vampire, for three and two black, is a flying 4-4 four, four creature. Whenever a creature dealt damage by it dies this turn, we put a one counter on him. And saying your nose for Atu for three and two black is a four four with flying. If we pay one in black and remove it from the game, we can put a one two black creature token with flying onto the battlefield. If we pay one in a black, we can sacrifice that creature to return saying your nose for Atu to play. So now let's get into our extended family. These are often people who are at the family dinner that maybe we want to avoid. 
Knight of the Ebon Legion for one and a black is a one two. We can pay two and a black and Knight of the Ebon Legion gets plus three plus three and gains death touch until the end of turn. At the beginning of our end step, if a player lost four more life this turn, we get to put a one one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. Child of Night for one and a black is a two one vampire with lifelink. The family pet, saying your bats, costs one and two black and is a one two with flying. Whenever a creature is put into the graveyard that was dealt damage by saying your bats, we put a one one counter on it. And everybody Everybody's favorite uncle, but nobody knows whose uncle he really is. Uncle Istavan costs one and three black and is a one three, and we can prevent all damage that would be dealt to him by creatures. Singor Aristocrats for three and a black is that work friend that shows up and brings guests. He's a two two, and when he enters the battlefield, we create three zero one black surf creature tokens, and when he leaves the battlefield, we have to exile all those tokens. Now, it can be difficult and complicated navigating your family, so we're going to cover that in Draining Family Time. Bloodseeker costs one and a black and is a 1-1 one, one that reads, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, we may have that player lose one life. This can also be a politics piece. Falconrath Noble for three and a black is a 2-2 two, two with flying. Whenever it or another creature dies, we can have target player lose one life and we'll gain one life. Sanctum Seeker for two and two black is a 3-4 Vampire Knight. Whenever a vampire we control attacks, each opponent loses one life and we will gain one life. Epicure Blood for four and a black says whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life and it's a 4-4. Four, four. This is important because many of our other life gain abilities will basically be double damage once this is in play. Grey Merchant of Asphodel for 3 and 2 black is a 2-4. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent will lose X life, where X is our devotion to black, and will gain a total amount of life equal to the life lost that way. Malacure Blood Witch for 3 and 2 black is a 4-4 flying protection from white vampire shaman. When he enters the battlefield, each opponent will lose life equal to the number of vampires we control, and will gain life equal to the life lost this way. Now in our next section, we have some amazing vampires and creatures we want to get into play, but first, we've got to get them in our hand, and we're going to see how we do that in Drawing Blood. Asylum Visitor for one and a black is a Vampire Wizard 3-1 creature. The beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, we draw a card and lose one life, and it has Madness for one and a black. Dusk Legion Zealot for one and a black is a 1-1. One, one. When he enters the battlefield, we draw a card and lose a life. Signed in Blood for two black will have target player draw two cards and lose two life. Blood Tracker for three and a black is flying. We can pay one and pay two life and put a 1-1 one, one counter on Blood Tracker. When he leaves the battlefield, we're going to draw a card for each 1-1 one, one counter that was on him. Champion of Dusk. Dusk for three and two black is a vampire knight and he is a four four creature. When he enters the battlefield, we're gonna draw X cards and lose X life where X is the number of vampires we control. And a damnable pack for X and two black will let us draw X cards and lose X life. Now let's look how we're gonna devour problems from the battlefield in The Feast. First up, we have Urge to Feed. For two black, it's going to give target creature minus three minus three until end of turn. We may tap any untapped vampire creatures we control. If we do, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of those vampires. Feast of Blood for one and a black says, cast Feast of Blood only if you control two or more vampires. You destroy target creature and gain four life. Vampire Hexmage for two black is a 2-1 first strike vampire. If we sacrifice her, we can remove all counters from target permanent. This is a great way to deal with counter decks, but also pesky planeswalkers. Another way to deal with our opponent's planeswalkers is the Elder Spell. For two black, it destroys any number of planeswalkers. We choose planeswalker we control, and we put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker that was destroyed by the spell. Finally, we have Vona's Hunger. For two and a black, it has Ascend. Each opponent will sacrifice a creature if we have the City's Blessing. Instead, each opponent will sacrifice half the creatures he or she controls around it up. So that's the cards in the deck. Let's look at how we're going to make this deck run in the mana base. So since I was trying to keep this deck budget, it's running 24 swamps. Now that we've looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. In this deck, our Oathbreaker costs about $11.32 currently, so our deck price will include all the cards and the shipping cost, but not the cost of our Oathbreaker or basic lands. The cost of this deck was the best available price on C TCG Player at the time of recording this video. The average deck cost for Soren Imperious Bloodlord is $204.94, and there are approximately 86 decks played, which is about 0.7%. Our deck is going to be $24.65. You can check out a breakdown of this deck's cost that will be a link posted in the description. 
This deck was built on a budget, but if you have the resources, you can have this deck with all the trimmings. Captivating Vampire for 1 and 2 black is a 2-2 two -two vampire, and other vampires we control will get plus 1, plus 1. And if we tap 5 untapped vampires we control, we can gain control of target creature, and it will become a vampire. And to add it, we're going to remove Blood Tracker. Next up, we think you should add Adrana, Liberator of Malakir. For 1 and 2 black, she's a 2-3 flying first strike vampire ally creature. Whenever she deals combat damage to a player, we put a 1-1 one -one counter on each attacking creature we control. To add her, we're going to remove Singer Bats. Next up, we can add a Crypt Guys. It costs 3 and a black, and it's a 2-2 creature with Egg Store, and it allows us to tap all our swamps for an additional mana. To add it, we suggest removing Uncle Istavan. Vampire Nocturnus costs 1 and 3 black. We get to play with the top card of our library revealed as long as the top card of our library is black. Vampire Nocturnus and all other vampires we control get plus 2, plus 1, and flying. To add that, we're going to get rid of Singer Aristocrat. And finally, we suggest adding a Nakirin Revenant. Uh, it costs 4 and 2 black and is a 4-4 creature and allows us to tap our swamps for an additional mana. And we can pump it by playing 1 black mana. To add it, we're going to suggest removing Child of Night. So there are so many ways to flavor and upgrade this dish. I went with Anthems and Ramp, but so many vampires exist in the history of magic, I really want to see what you guys would do to change this deck, so please let me know in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by shopping for gaming stuff using our links in the description. If you want more deck tech content today, then you can check out the Oathbreaker playlist here and the Holly Deck playlist. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. A quick reminder, be like a planeswalker, and show your loyalty by subscribing to this channel. And I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't.